My name is Jason Max Ferdinand. I'm assistant professor of music here at Oakwood University and also director of choral activities. Very good. And you, sir? Uh, my name is Wayne Buckner. I serve as chair of the music department, um, piano professor. Yes, the World Choir Olympics, um, which for the first time will be held here in, in the United States of America. I believe the last one was held in China and before that Austria and Germany, I believe. Um, I know Wayne will probably speak later about the initial call invitation that we got back in August and, and until this time. But yeah, the World Choir Games are a huge event we're finding out as we go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, 300 and something choirs from around the world that will be participating in various categories. So it seems to be a big deal and looking forward to it. Um, well, let me see. You mentioned Russia and we got the initial call, I think it was about August. Um, and I'm not sure who this gentleman was, but I think he was a volunteer working with the committee. And um, he just thought that it would be a great idea for our choir to do it. Um, at the time, we were preparing for Russia, so we didn't really respond um, then. And then um, I think he and another person called uh, early in the next year um, after we got back from Russia, just really, really wanting us to be a part of this competition. And we were wondering why mm -hmm. they're calling you know, us to be a part. And we didn't realize how big it was. So um, it's just an honor to, to actually be asked to, um, to be a part of the competition. I think part of the, um, the requirements for getting in, there, there are two parts of the competition. There's an open level and then there's a champions competition. And one of the requirements to get into the champions is actually an invitation from that panel or um, you know, also winning a national competition like we have before. This is a national competition. Uh, this past November, um, we returned to the Ising uh, HBCU, Historically Black Colleges and University Choir Competition, and we won for a second time. Um, so you mean to say then that you won in 2010 and 2011? Correct. Which thereby makes you, in this state where we have Auburn Tigers and <laughs> Alabama Crimson Tide, you are the only Alabama national back-to-back -back college champions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did that mean for you? And what did that mean for the, the, the choristers? Oh man, um, it kind of just uh, inspired us. After the first year's win, having to go back because I think the second time we just felt so much more pressure, um, just trying to, you know, work at a high level again. But it it meant a lot of re reaffirmation. Um, um, it encouraged us to, to work even harder to, to, we saw what we were, were capable of and to try to match that and go even further, um, it, it served as fuel um, to, the, to the engine, so. Mm, uh, I mean, I think it speaks to dedication. Um, it speaks to, I mean, preparation by faculty and students that are just willing to, to serve. Um, uh, of course, we'd love to award them scholarships, so that's a plug for scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it's it's we have a wonderful uh, faculty, we have a wonderful mm -hmm. student body, um, and um, just really talented. We we get them from everywhere. You know, Oakwood is a, a historically black institution, and it's a Seventh Day Adventist college as well. So we get them from all over the world, and we're just blessed to serve here and and to teach these students. I think I think part of that whole picture is someone may come into the aliens being a singer and then leave being an alien. Um, um, being an alien is a really really special thing. As Wayne said, it takes dedication. Um, like many other choirs, a lot of hard work and practice. At being an alien, that's a it's a it's one of those things. It's hard to put in words. Being an alien encapsulates that awkward sound. We keep coming back to um,
having a real good photo image of what that is in your head. Um, I know with the choirs I've had in the last four years, that's a word we use all the time. And if, if I bring back some of my former students now, they know what that means. Um, being an alien, is, you know, you learn about sacrifice and being uh, accommodating to others. Um, and we have that mantra that we always use, once an alien, always an alien. So, you know, we, we, we stem from the present group all the way back to Wayne's generation. It, that's hard to, to, to put into words, but I think elements of the Oakwood sound, um, excellence. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think our denomination and our school strive for excellence. So in whatever style that we're singing in, you know, gospel, spiritual, chorale, um, we're striving for excellence. Um, I think that the sound has been affected and shaped by people that have been successful in the industry, you know, you're speaking take six, virtue, committed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, obviously when those people are successful, everyone's hearing them and at least, at least our denomination, our school is actually listening to their music and trying to emulate mm -hmm. what we hear. So um, I know that um, from playing or from singing, the, the alumni or the new students have always listened to old alumni. So, um, you know, and I'm sure Take Six, who would Take Six have listened to? Um, you know, there had to be someone before mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. you know, the brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Colombians, Cathedral Quartet. Cathedral Quartet, I don't even know them, yeah. but, but there, there's a succession. And oh. so I don't know how to, 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 yeah. to really define that sound, but it's definitely ancestral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think one other part of that too is the SDA Church and specifically Oakwood's campus, you know, I don't know, 50s, 60s, probably even 70s, drums and percussion instruments were not really allowed. Mm. And I think what happened was the groups and singers then started to rely on um, the, the harmony part of music. Mm -hmm. And so if you really listen to Oakwood's sound, you know, the harmony is a critical part of, of, of that. Good um, point. Close harmonies. And the rhythmic element, we kind of learn to do without the literal percussion instruments. It'll come in the form of the bass line or, or something. So we found other ways to compensate the lack of percussion in church or chapels or whatever we had here. Uh, um, I, I just use that term when I'm trying to convey, you know, the, the whole culture of orchestral arranging and the way the colors that it produce and the way they voice stuff and I always try to use a lot of analogies with choirs and orchestra so I just kind of join the two to make it orchestration. Orchestration is a is a approaching a passage of music or a particular sound as a orchestra would. Um, with 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 the orchestra, I, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but you know, a orchestra. Boy, no, boy, boy. <laughs> you know, orchestra. If I'm sitting here playing my clarinet, Wayne is over here playing the violin, but he he can't see what I'm. He doesn't see what what I'm doing. Whereas in a choir, we all looking at scores, and I could see exactly what what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, so in an orchestra, there's a el there's an added element of really having to listen and really being aware of things you're not seeing. Just doing that just opens up a whole a whole new world. And choirs, in, at least in my choirs, I've learned that uh, with that added element of really trying to work together, just kind of creates a different synergy as opposed to, you know, just... Um, so orchestration takes in a lot of different things. It takes in um, auditory things. It takes in um, the making of colors, producing different colors. You know, for example, I'll say, okay, let's sing this like a string choir or mm -hmm. guys this part is brass you know so orchestration is a term I kind of like it, it just opens up a whole different world to me well I, I believe there are like 23 different categories yeah. in this in this big thing and uh, we are entered into three um, uh, music of the religions um, the Negro spiritual and contemporary music. Um, now break those down for me. Mm -hmm. um, the Negro spiritual, uh, let me not make any assumptions. Why did we choose to enter that category? 
To be honest, I think when uh, one of their representatives contacted our manager, they specifically wanted us in that category. Right. Uh, I, I do remember that. Uh, and the aliens over the years have prided themselves in, you know, being excellent in the singing of Negro spirituals. Um, I think most HBCUs, you know, do really well. That's our heritage. That's, that's mm -hmm. kind of where we came from. So the Negro spiritual will be an obvious, mm -hmm. obvious choice. Uh, music of the religions, um, we chose that because it'll give us a chance to, to go back to what we were just talking about, you know, that awkward sound, that some day Adventist sound. Uh -huh. um, there's so many times we go so many places and um, uh, people from other denominations will say, you know, you some day Adventists have a, something different. Um, so we, we picked that category because it'll showcase. Um, I think we do one of Wayne's um, compositions there and one of my arrangements and Theodore Thorpe's um, Seven for All Men. So it'll give us a chance to really showcase, you know, some day Adventist music. And what's the other category? The contemporary category. Um, I'm not particularly sure why we picked that one, but I know um, that one will give us a chance to really um, show some newer things. Um, I, I really believe in, um, you know, championing new music, which I think we've done a pretty good job of. Um, one of the challenges <laughs> in that category was to, um, there has to be a song from a composer who does not reside in your particular country. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do uh, Joseph Swider's Cantata Domino, a Polish composer, and the composer still has to be alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very, very challenging piece, which we haven't done in three years. Is it three? Three yeah. years. So this present. Is that the one on the CD? It's one on song the first CD. I, I, I don't know. You <laughs> 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 um, so this present alien group doesn't know it. So this is going to be very interesting because they, they have homework that they should be doing right now. <laughs> um, and hopefully when we come on next Friday, it kind of comes together. It was a very, very challenging piece. If we do well, it will make a very good impression. And if we do badly, it will be a very poor impression. <laughs>